Hello everyone. I am going to take you for a ride in my little brain. This is what I did on my mental prayer meditation this morning. It's always over the readings. And this time it's the Psalms. And I'm going to just express what I was thinking, how I was reflecting on my own life, and what I was talking to God about. And I don't know, maybe, <laughs> just maybe, you can relate. I think that's why you listen to this podcast. I think you enjoy the raw, real feedback in my life and the constant picking myself back up and putting myself back on the path with God's grace and his mercy and his sacraments. I'm telling you, it's it's just amazing. I love this psalm, yet I hate it at the same time. So it's Psalm 50. I don't know exactly which one which one it is, but it says 58 dash 9, 16 BC dash 17, and then 21 and 23. But don't worry. A, just go to the daily readings for today, anywhere. Just search Catholic Church Daily Readings today. Or go to the usccb.org website and click Daily Readings. By the way, you can sign up for the Daily Readings to be emailed to you every single day. So all you have to do is pull up your email. And don't look at other emails. Don't get distracted. Have discipline. Ooh, is that what I'm going to read to you? (laughs) Okay. Here it goes. Why do you recite my statues and profess my cup?
you know, down this path of life. I don't want God to like spew me out of his mouth. You know, I know that's when you're lukewarm, but at the very end of this whole Psalm, it said those who go the right path and do the right thing will be saved. They will see salvation. So the next time that you are going to do something that is not disciplined, that does not follow God's precepts, think about him basically looking at you and calling you a hypocrite. Or think about yourself being a liar. You know? saying how much you profess your love for Jesus, and then you do X, Y, and Z. My husband has called me out on this before. I remember watching a commercial, and I'll be very honest with you, it was something on that commercial. I didn't know what it was. Is it a dude? Is it a girl? Is it a gal? A chick? I have no clue. And so in kind of a disgusting tone, because I was kind of disgusted, I said, what is that? Totally judging that person, that commercial, with just, again, disgust. And this was before all of this trans crud came at us, seriously. So my husband looks at me and he goes, wow, that wasn't very Jesus-like. Little things like this can go against us in our evangelization efforts. Little actions of swearing or snipping at someone or casting judgment or being judgmental or not having forgiveness or letting your emotions get the best of you. This is just with people. People are watching you, whether you know it or not. And the more that we go down this path with Jesus, we ought to be changing. We ought to be getting better. We ought to be paying attention and capturing those thoughts and fighting the spiritual battle. So if it's temptation, if it's discipline, if it's things that you are not doing because you are just lazy and you don't want to do it because you haven't really done it before, again, your body is your mind. You're allowing your body to rule you because your body doesn't want to do it. Your mind may not want to do it because you've never done it before. Sitting in silence and keeping your mind focused on God is hard in the beginning. It's actually hard all the time. Every day is different. That's why the Catechism of the Catholic Church has a section that says prayer is a battle. But it doesn't mean we stop. Why? Because we know that if we do not pray, we will not be saved. So for any of you out there who are being lazy in terms of your spiritual life and your relationship with God through prayer, stop it. Please, I beg you. Me too. Do not think that I am wagging my finger at you. I tell you all the time how sometimes my prayer is just fit in. When I was traveling to Tennessee, it kind of got fit in. When my dad was sick, it kind of got fit in. I was still talking to God all day. I was still thanking God. I was still saying grace before meals and all of this stuff. But I do know that when I don't do my regular prayer at 5 a.m. in the dark, Before the whole world gets up, I don't talk to God as much. I'm not as humble. I'm a little bit more irritable, edgy, filled with just not God. Not that I'm like, like, you know, like my day has no semblance, like it has no form of the other day. That's not the case. But I know it's not as good. You know this too. Those of you who have prayed and have had those amazing moments in the morning where you just offered God your first fruits, you know that that is so different than the days when you don't pray. And if this is something that's going on in your life with food, alcohol, 
drugs where you just cannot control and you have an addiction, you've got to call out to Mary and Jesus. Ask for Mary's help. Mary is there for you. And if you have not consecrated yourself to Jesus through Mary, please, please do so. You honestly don't have to go through a 33-day consecration. So what I did was Father Michael Gately, 33 Days to Morning Glory. That's a book you read a little bit every single day. But I'm going to be brutally honest and nothing against Father Michael Gately, but boy, I didn't get a whole lot out of it. And I did it like seven times, I think. Still, not really finding that connection to Mary when I found my real connection to Mary and everything turned around was when I did St. Louis de Montfort's true devotion to Mary. That's another 33 days, but so much more intense and yet changed my heart toward Mary. So if it's things that you are doing that are bringing you into mortal sin, by golly, please contact Mary and get on your knees and spend more time in the sacraments. Go to adoration. Go to a couple of daily masses. Get more Eucharist in you for protection. And learn to lean on God. Learn (laughs) to identify those times when those temptations are coming so that you can cast them out through deliverance prayers. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bind the spirit of temptation, of pornography, of alcoholism. And I command you to go to the foot of the Holy Cross for Jesus Christ to pour his precious blood on you and to receive your sentence never to come back again. That's how it works. That's how we need to move forward in this life and not be a hypocrite. Maybe you're working on learning new things and you constantly start and stop, start and stop, start and stop. It's a discipline thing. So schedule the time, just like prayer, and do it. Because one thing that I've learned in these last 10 years, going on 11, is that God, 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 is the one that gets us through everything. And we are supposed to conform to him. First couple years of my journey, I didn't. I was just like, oh, I love Jesus, and I was praying and all that kind of stuff, but I was still doing all of my other stuff. And then someone makes a comment about my swearing, and this is where God draws to our eyes what we need to work on. So please, today, sit with these readings in the psalm and just rest and let God rise to your eyes what he's there to help you with. Because he's there waiting for you to call out to him. Let's pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Come into our hearts, into our minds, into our souls, into our bodies where we are your holy temple. Help us to treat our bodies well. Help us to treat our soul well and to treat our minds well so that we can live according to your precepts, not be lazy, and be disciplined in our life so that our witness can be a turnaround for someone where they come running to you based on the healing that you've done in us. Mary, take our left hand. We need you so much on this journey. Holy Spirit, your beloved spouse, take our right Please guide us and lead us to Jesus' sacred heart. Today, help us to identify exactly where we are being a hypocrite. And give us the grace and the mercy to change it. In your holy name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Guardian angel, guide us and lead us and protect us. All you holy angels and saints, wrap around us. And all of you souls in purgatory, if you can help us with your prayers, with these things that we are trying to fight, we would be so grateful. Speaking of the souls in purgatory, Lord, we are going to pray a Hail Mary as we offer up 
a petition to you to free all of the souls in purgatory who are just so desperate to be with you in heaven. Oh, sorry, everyone. Sorry, Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Lord, please free the souls in purgatory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Boy, nothing worse than having a prayer interrupted by a <laughs> an alarm. I have my purgatory relevant radio segment coming on today, taking people to my YouTube channel, which is where I'm doing my purgatory series. If you want to learn biblical reasons and proof for purgatory, go check out my YouTube channel. It's on the free channel, so don't worry about that. I need everyone to be praying for the souls in purgatory. We need everyone to be praying for the souls in purgatory because most likely we will be there too and we need prayers from others. So let's do this. Okay, don't forget to sit with the Psalms. And today is a new day. You can turn it all around. Don't look back. Just look forward in today, not too far, in the 24 hours today. And you may be amazed at how beautiful your day is because you started it with God and you kept talking to God throughout the day, especially when you're challenged with discipline. Okay. (laughs) I love you all. Find something more with God, soul, mind, and body, and have a blessed and inspired day.